Okay, good morning. Let's see, what's today's date? <laughs> it's April 11th, 2020, and work continues on my um, quarantine project, the Q31 receiver for the 31 meter shortwave band. Um, taking it slow on this because it's one of the main purposes of the project is just to keep me occupied during uh, the quarantine lockdown period here that we're going through. Um, so taking it at one stage at a, at a time, which is always a good idea. I've, I've completed the VFO and I've also last yesterday worked on, or the day before, worked on the uh, diode ring mixer, which you see up there on top. And I decided to take on as the next project, the next step, the, uh, the bandpass filter. This is very important for a receiver like this because the IF frequency is 455 kcs. And normally they don't recommend using um, an IF that low above seven megahertz because you get into image frequency, image problems. Um, it's, it's hard to build a bandpass filter that's narrow enough to knock down image frequencies that will come in if the uh, if the IF is low and the frequency starts getting high, we're significantly above seven megahertz here. We're at the 9.4 to 9.9 .9 megahertz range, but I wanted to use 455 as the IF uh, because I have a 10 kc wide filter that um, Bruce KK0S has sent me. And uh, it's just the right width for shortwave broadcast listening and that, that's what drove me towards um, 455 as the IF. So there we are, there we have it. And now this makes work on the, um, the bandpass filter, which will knock down the image, very important. So I started out thinking that I was gonna use the topology, the topology from the uh, BIDX40 module that Farhan has. That basically has three series LC circuits attuned to the uh, the desired frequency uh, with with uh, caps going to ground at the junctions of the, uh, the of the three different uh, filters. I went to LC, uh, the program I like very much to design filters, LC, E-L-S-I-E, -E, like LC the cow, but also LC, get it? It's a very useful program, and I plugged in the parameters and it spat out the the parts that I needed and I proceeded to build a filter along those lines and here it is you can see the uh, the toroids <clears throat> and actually there's four LC circuits in this one and uh, I, I used little trimmer caps between I started out with fixed capacitors I could not get it to work then I figured, well, I needed to be able to tune them more, so I replaced the fixed caps with these uh, trimmer caps, and I figured I would just tweak it up and get it to work, and I could not get it to work. I don't know why. Uh, I'm using kind of unusually um, ferrite toroids here um, instead of um, iron powder, and that, that might have had something to do with it. But I don't know. Uh, I just was unable to get it to work. I struggled with it for a while, but then decided to move on. I kept it all together. I'll go back to this and figure out what went wrong later on. But I turned to a different design. And here I have to thank, um, here it is, W8DIZ, Diz. Diz sells bandpass filters, kits for bandpass filters. And on his website, he provided the schematic and the parts values for the bandpass filters that he sells. Now, given that this is an on-hand project, that I'm only going to use parts that I have on hand, I did not want to go out and buy the bandpass filters from Diz. Um, um, Paul, VK3HN, I believe he got his from Diz. But I looked at this and I realized, aha, I have a fairly well stocked junk box and I will then I will now build the bandpass filters from Diz's website. I also did not feel bad about this at all because the um, the 
co the coils, the toroid, the toroidal cores that you see here, I bought from Diz. And the trimmer caps, I also bought from Diz, kits and parts. Ha! The radio gods have spoken. So this was clearly the, uh, the circuit for me. It's got three parallel um, resonant circuits joined by two small capacitors up here. And then it's got link coupling for impedance matching at either end. Very simple. So I sat down this morning and I built, built this, okay? So there are the three toroids and I just used some insulated copper wire. It's, it's sometimes easier to do this because you don't have to worry about nicking the enamel. And I used three different, not well, different colors, it's a colorful thing, but they're all yellow core uh, T50-6 toroids. There are three 68 picofarad fixed caps, and then three of the kits and parts, um, 10 through 50 picofarad trimmers in there. It all went together in, in about an hour, and I'll show you the results. So I have coming in on this lead here, a signal at the center of the passband, which is 9.65 megahertz, right in the middle of the 31 meter band. I have the scope connected at the other end. I should have a load there, but I just wanted to see if the signal was was getting through. So let's see here. Let get it all in the picture here. There's, you can see the scope. Look over here. Boom. Wow. There it goes through. Nice strong signal coming through, all the way through. And now I'm going to reach over here and just check the frequency response of the filter. So you can see it, looking at Steve Silverman's um, Hewlett Packard H8640B signal generator. They're 9.654, which is 9.65, which is the center of the band. Watch when I tune. Whoop, boom. By 8.8, .8, signals are really way down. Go back, there it is again. Couple peaks there to keep you inside the whole the whole band is very nice, and then go up, and then boom. By, by 10 megahertz, it's uh, really significantly down. So we're getting the right frequency response. The thing is working. This is what I was hoping to see with the first filter yesterday, but it just wasn't happening for me. Those are the uh, trials and tribulations we often talk about on the uh, the Sarge Monk podcast. I certainly had a few yesterday, but. You just got to sometimes retreat, regroup, and move forward. Anyway, I think the bandpass filter is now well in hand. Next, I guess I'm going to build an RF amplifier to go between the bandpass filter and the diode ring mixer. And at that point, we will be taking RF from the antenna through the bandpass filter into the diode ring mixer, combining it with VFO energy and having 455 KC come out. Then we'll start working on the IF amplifier chain, the audio frequency amplifiers, and that'll be a receiver. Anyway, this was kind of fun. And I thank W8DIZ Diz from Kits and Parts for the circuit and the parts. Thanks, Diz. And uh, all of you uh, sits, stay in the shack, stay safe. Flatten the curve, 7-3.